Hey guys, so I'm showing you this video tutorial which I have taken from our Galaxy processing guide uh, which has many different lessons in a full workflow and so this is just going to be a quick video showing you how to combine HA with RGB. So originally the video is just to be followed along with a text which is full of details including all the equations and all that. So if you're interested in uh, processing your galaxies the way we do and be sure to check out the Galaxy Guide, which is um, linked in the description. So a big thanks to Crazed Conceptions, which is uh, the channel that uh, taught me how to do this HA combination in the first place. By the way, I wonder what happened to Julian. I haven't seen any videos or content from him in a while, so if you guys know, I would love to know because it was really cool. So let's go into the video and you'll see how I currently combine my HA with the RGB. So it is now time to combine our H file with the RGB. So this is a bit scary at first, but it's not too difficult. So I'm going to show you how to do it. It's in two different steps. So the first step will be to open up H and R. Side by side is fine. And we're going to kind of isolate our HA here um, and try to only get the HA kind of isolated from the R. Uh, it will make sense once I show you how um, the process works. So if we go to process or processes and look for pixel math, we'll have to write a small equation, which is this one here. So h, which is our ha file, make sure it's named h the same way, minus q times in parentheses r, which is our red file, make sure it's the same name, r, minus med r. So if we go to symbols, we'll do q equals 0. Point, let's do with 0 0.1 for now. And this value is going to change depending on how much we want to apply this process. You will see in just a second. So let's try 0 0.1 as a value. Uh, we'll do a small preview on the Galaxy itself and go into the preview window and apply pixel math on the H file. As you can see, it's completely darkening our image, which is not good. So for this, we have to change the value for Q. Uh, I think 0 0.1 is too much. So let's try 0 0.03 and see what happens now. As you can see, it's a big difference. So before, after, before, after. And so what it does is it really does isolate just the HA regions. Uh, the issue is it's a bit too dark, in my opinion, in the center here. So I'm going to maybe try 0 0.2 and see what happens. Okay. See, all this glow will now disappear. And I think this is a good, uh, a good value for this case. Of course, your value will change. It can be 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. It depends on your image. So in this particular uh, data here, it seems to be 0 0.02 that we were looking for. So I'm now going to apply this to the main image. Okay. And we can reset pixel math. And so now we'll have to implement this with the RGB. So for this, let's first combine the RGB together so using LRGB combination, if I can find it, oh, right here. And we can uncheck the L channel and do RGB for the RGB slots. And now we can apply globally. And it's going to create a new image, which is a combination of our R, G, and B files. Okay, we can now stretch this image, I'm going to close LRGB combination and minimize the L just so it's neat. And if we go to STF and stretch, this is the result. So don't care about the reflections too much for now, we'll take care of this later. But this is our current result. A very bright image, very, very bright. Okay, so now how do we add the HA file to this? So this will require a new equation. And so I'm going to uncheck the use a single RGB key expression. And so the equation that I'm writing here, I don't remember them by heart, you know, I just have them in a file somewhere. 
It will also be in the text version of this course, uh, but be sure to don't like, don't try to remember them. There is no way. Just have them somewhere in a file and uh, use them whenever you need them. So in this case, the R uh, tab is this equation. The G will just be a uh, dollar sign T. And don't ask me why. Uh, by the way, I don't. I never never learned about all these weird equations. I just find them and learn them over time. And then the B will be this equation here. So we have to make sure we go to symbols as well. And in symbols, uh, I believe is B for boost and then equals, and you can use any value you want. Let's start with two uh, and see what happens. So T, B is our blue, H is our H file, G, B. Okay, everything is properly named. Okay, let's now try to apply this. I'm going to do a preview on the Galaxy and use this preview to see the difference. Let's hope it's a good value to use. Okay, and if we do before and after, as you can see, there is almost no difference. Undo, redo. You can see some reds here. Uh, what you can also do is use a mask to protect your background. Uh, I'm actually going to do this. So if we want to use a mask, let's just extract the luminance out of this file by going on this shortcut here. And we can stretch this accordingly by using the histogram transformation. We'll give it a quick stretch and have a very dark background with a bright galaxy. This looks pretty good. Okay, let's do this. I will apply that and we'll use this as a mask. And I think it should protect our background from any unwanted red. Okay, I'm going to hide the mask using Command K. And let's try again to apply this. And I think the boost uh, in symbols, the boost value is too low. So let's try something crazier like 10 just so we can see the difference really easily. And with a boost of 10, it's uh, five times the value, and you can see now it's much more obvious. So after, before, after, and it's looking very nice. So let's be a bit more crazy and do 15. Okay, so as you can see, you can use any value you want and uh, get results you think looks the best. In my case, I think 15 looks pretty natural, so it's nice. I'm going to go crazy and go to 25 just to be to be nuts and see what happens. But as you can see, even with the mask, it's still affecting the background and stuff. So uh, even though the galaxy looks nice, um, I think 25 might be a bit too much. Maybe I'll settle for 20. But uh, take your time and try different values. And once you're happy, you can uh, apply this. I'm actually going to do 15 because remember as well that we're still in the linear phase. So once we get out of the linear phase, we are going to be able to uh, play with our colors much more. So I'll do 15 for now and we should be happy with that. Okay, that's a nice looking galaxy. I can now reset and close pixel math. And now I'm going to close the preview and the mask as well. And now we can rename our image RGBH because this is our main image now. So it is now time to turn this into a nonlinear image. So we're going to be stretching this image permanently. And for this, I'm going to use, uh, let's go with histogram transformation, which is my, you know, it's the most basic, but my favorite way to just stretch images. Uh, and we're going to reset the STF since we no longer need this. And we can go ahead and close that completely. I can also delete the old mask we were using earlier. And now let's use the preview, the live preview window, and hit the check mark here so we can link up to our current image. And 
start moving this triangle here to the left to stretch our image. And as you can see, the, the red edge shape pops out way faster now that it's being stretched. Okay, I will uh, probably stop around here because I don't want to clip anything. Let's apply this. And let's try again a couple of times. Maybe around here. And you can also play with the different colors uh, using those tabs here. So for example, I want to line up all three channels here. So uh, let's go maybe like this. Let's line up the red one with the green and the blue one with the other two. And now it's more balanced. Apply again. And I might apply one last time to make it brighter using the uh, RGBK curve. Okay, let's try here. Okay, it's bright enough. Let's make the background a bit darker without clipping, hopefully. I think I'm happy with this. Let's apply and we'll be done with the um, stretching. What you can also do depending on your image, in this case it's not really needed, but uh, if you do want to try, you can try Ox and Stretch, which will give you a, a more colorful slash vibrant image. But um, in this case, I think we might not need it. Um, maybe a little bit, just to make our, our colors pop a bit more. Let's see. Before, after, before, after. Uh, no, I will just skip it this time. Okay. And so now we are officially in the nonlinear phase. Okay, so as you could see, it might not feel like a, a big difference, but or be, that's because you haven't stretched the image and went along with the full uh, workflow yet. So if you keep processing your image, you will see that, uh, for example, once you get to the curves, uh, the edge shape pops out much, much more. So it is there, it's just not visible that much uh, at that current stage. But yeah, keep going and keep processing your object and you will see that um, it will all pop out and make a beautiful result at the end. And yes, it is worth it to add HA to RGB in some galaxies like M101. So I'll see you guys next time and class guys.